Welcome to Q&A practice. We'll start with a little little two voice with the with the defense attorney. Ready? You just don't recall. I don't recall. Now after you left the pool area and went back to your room, you came back in a couple hours. It was daylight. I took a taxi and then I arrived back at the hotel. It was still daylight, getting dark. Very good. Now how long did you meet with Mr. Lee last at the apartment that he was living in? We met very briefly, just a couple of minutes. It was long enough to have another soft drink and to talk for a few moments. Then you left, and then I left. Not over an hour, I don't believe. All right. Now, when did you see Mr. Lee the next time? The next time I saw Mr. Lee was in the United States after I had returned. Do you remember what month it was? It was in late March, probably between the 25th and the 30th of March. It took you three days to get to Japan, two days, and then you flew back to the United States, that's correct, and you went to Seattle. As I recollect, I went to Seattle. You didn't fly into Canada first? I don't recall. You must understand there were more than there was more than one trip. We used the same routing for about four trips. There were minor variations, but in substance, I returned one way or the other to the United States, either through Vancouver or through LAX. There were only two stops that you could make on that route at that time with those carriers. How long did it take you to get home from Seattle? It's about a three and a half hour flight, I think, by the time you check in. It's not a long flight. Now for some four voice. And we'll start with the plaintiff. Ready? Okay, and so how did, what did you say to that? I said, okay, I showed him that I had the money and he went on a payphone and made a call which is inside the premises. Okay, after you told him you wanted the eight ball, he said it would cost $120, yes, that he would have to call Juan to deliver it to the bar, yes, okay. And this, where did this discussion occur? We were in the bar area near the fixed bar, and then he went to the payphone. And what about... At this time, had Cindy already returned to her bartending duties? Yes. And so Ron made his call? Yes. All right. And then what happened? Upon Juan leaving his house, we had Hollywood LAPD Narcotics Unit working with us. They did a traffic stop on Juan before he could get to the bar. So he never arrived? Correct. And which police department did you say? LAPD. So just, so this night, the August 14th, that was going to be the final night at the investigation? Yes. All right. So had, so you had other officers at other locations to assist you in closing, finishing up the operation? Yes. No further questions. Did you want to take a break before we go on? Let's take a short break. Let's go back on the record. You can just go ahead and sit down. Let the record reflect that both parties are present. And Mr. Van, you had completed your direct examination of this witness. Is that correct? Yes. 
All right, so you were going to start your cross-examination. Yes, thank you. Ready, Your Honor? Yes. Okay, Investigator James, can you give us a brief description of the physical appearance of the bar? In other words, were th where things are in relationship to one another, size, those kind of things? Sure, it's a relatively small bar. It's probably 50 feet by 25 feet, and that's an estimation. The bar is deeper than it is wide. You come in off of the intersection of Vine and Normandy, kind of on a catty corner, and then there's a rear door at the premises that goes into a little alley, kind of in the middle of the bar. On the west wall is the fixed bar. It takes up a good portion of the room. There are some tables in the room. There are taller chairs that go all the way around in front of the fixed bar. There's a pool table, kind of a little bit more south in the premises, and there's some bench seating around the pool table. As you walk back towards the rear door, there's a men's restroom on the west side. Then there's a female restroom on the west side, and on the opposite wall, the east side, there's some kind of storage or kitchen room. Okay, and the can you, I'm sorry, you said that the restrooms are on which side? The west wall. On the west wall, okay, and then the storage would be on the east wall. Okay, thank you. And the area between the restroom and the storage would be just four or five foot wide. Walkway or something, access to the back door, I take it? Yes and the restrooms and the bar fixture are on the same wall. They're both on the west wall, I think you indicated. Yes, can you estimate what the patron capacity of the location is? Just a rough estimation, maybe 75. Just a few varied things with regard to your testimony. In your, with regard to and if you need to refer to your report while we're talking and answer any questions or, excuse me, any objections from Mr. Van or the court, feel free to. You're welcome to do that when you're responding to my questions. You referred on the 624 incident to an individual by the name of Sam. Is it my understanding, and it wasn't quite clear to me, that Sam was a customer. He was a customer who helped the bartenders out with various things. Even, it sounded like there were a couple of incidents where customers helped out. Would that be true? Yes. And during that incident with, on 624, there was a female that was sitting in the bar. You testified that she said something to the effect that be careful or that you should be careful? Yes. And that was a customer also? Yes. And she said, and I think the language you said, at least the language in your report that you quote was, among other things, be careful around here. Did you have any understanding of what she meant with regard to her comment of being careful around here? No. You didn't know whether that meant that the there were any instructions by the employee to take action. I took it just that it was an illegal thing and I should be careful for the cops. That's what you took it to be? Yes. Did she? But she did say be careful around here, correct? Yes. Then on six, excuse me, on 7-6 of 06, you testified to an incident with Linda, some transactions that you apparently were involved in or heard, some discussion you heard, and then a customer apparently said something that that guy's stupid walking through here with drugs, something along those lines, yes, and did you have any understanding as to what he might have meant? 
just that in fear of being busted, you shouldn't have stuff like that just out in plain view. Where's the jukebox in relationship to the bar fixture? As you come in the main front door off of Vine and Normandy, there is a small wall that kind of blocks the view from outside inside. The jukebox is just on the other side of that, so maybe five feet from the front door behind a wall. Okay, and I'm sorry, if you walk in the front door, there's a wall that you have to go around to get into the premises, I take it? Yes, it's designed to block the view from the outside into the premises, yes. And the jukebox is on the back side of back side of that yes and where and the bar fixtures on the west wall how far away from the jukebox the fixed bar comes all the way down almost within five feet of the jukebox and that will conclude our Q&A practice